Real quick, I wanted to talk to you about some of our stuff on Delta Math. I noticed that the video that I posted uh, from my computer didn't have any sound with it because, um, well, I'm guessing that whenever I switch computers, maybe the mic's not enabled. I don't really know how to fix that. Um, but I wanted to show you real quick what I was doing. And I, I did go ahead and upload that video for you. That way you can see what it looks like on Delta Math when you create the, um, the rise over run on these. Well, let's just jump right in. All right, so you're going to be doing rise over run to find the slope of lines, you know, on a graph. So what you want to do is you want to find points like right here where it crosses, this line crosses that little uh, negative five um, exactly right on that little intersection. And then you want to find another place where it does that too. So like in this one, we'd go here and here. And we're just going to make little dots. We'll make them really small. And we're going to say, okay, well, right there's where it crosses. And then right there's where it crosses. But on Delta Math, I have to show the rise over run part. I have to show that it goes up to the negative 2 and make a little dashed line. And then I have to see that it goes over 1 and, and make that little line there. So then whenever I do this... I can type my slope over here. Now my slope on this one is going up to negative two, but it started at negative five. So it's going up three and it's going over one. So it'd be three over one, which equals three. So I just put three here and submit my answer and I'd be done. That's all I'm doing. Let's look at the next one. Now on this one, I can see a couple of easy points that I can look at. Now I can tell that it crosses here and it's crossing there. But then it's also doing here. Do the closest intersection to it because you're going to have to reduce if not. So I'm going to say, okay, well, it crosses exactly right here where these two lines meet. And it's going to cross exactly where these two lines meet. So on this one, I'm going to go down to here. It's going to go over to there. I'm going to draw a little right triangle. Just like when we did distance formula stuff. So I went down two. So it's negative two. And then I went over to. I did that a little bit on purpose because I wanted to show you where I could draw. It went through here too, right? And it went through there too. This is just a negative one slope. <laughs> but I could reach that down to negative one, right? And my slope was negative one. Um, on these ones, you could have just went straight down to here and over. Um, I don't know how I could have shown you that on this particular video because everything's going to run into each other right there. So I went down two and over two. You still get the same result. Uh, on Delta Math, I think it'll let you connect either, any way you want to. Uh, but I wanted to show you the gist of it. You're just, you know, going your rise over run down and over or up and over, whatever, and then type your slope in right there. Remember, whatever fraction you get here, if you type it in over there right here if you type it in on this um, and it gives you says it's wrong or something you might just need reduced so make sure you do the most reduced form the other part of what's going on on delta math today is you need to put equations in the slope intercept form and then it says simplify all fractions that means put it in the most simple form you can because uh, you want to get y by itself and to do that we've got to get Everything like this 8x, you gotta get it over here, and then you gotta get rid of that 10. We wanna get y by itself. So I'm gonna subtract 8x on each side. Sorry, I'm about almost put a y there. And it's gonna cancel off here, and I'll have 10y is equal to negative 8x plus 70, because it was a positive 70, right? Uh, and in case you forgot what slope intercept form is, I guess it should have started with this. Slope intercept form is y equals mx plus b, where m is your slope, and b is your y intercept. This should be review. Uh, there ain't no way you should be hearing this for the first time. I know you did this in algebra one. So now what I gotta do is I gotta divide by 10 to get the y by itself. So I gotta divide each side by 10. So when I do that, I'm gonna be left with negative eight over 10x 
plus, and I'm just going to write 70 divided by 10, even though I know it reduces. That's just to show you that every term on each side gets divided by the 10, not just one or the other. Now, I'm going to reduce my fractions. Negative 8 over 10 reduces down to negative 4 over 5. And then 70 divided by 10 is 7. And that would be my answer. That's all you have to do. Um, the hardest part about this for you is probably going to be reducing the fraction. Um, but you just you, you need to practice that as well. Like I've seen on these, these, the top and bottom both are divisible by 2. They're both even numbers. So 8 divided by 2 gave me 4. 10 divided by 2 gave me 5. And then I saw that that was the most simple way that I could represent that fraction. On this one, we again want to get y by itself. Eventually, we'll have to deal with that negative. It's not that big a deal. We're going to go ahead and we're going to get rid of the 2x. I'm going to subtract 2x on each side. I have negative y is equal to negative 2x. And right now, it's positive 4. So then i got to divide each side by negative 1. And the only thing this is going to do is just change the signs everywhere. Now I have y equals, instead of negative 2x, I have positive 2x. And instead of positive 4, now I'll have negative 4. The only thing I did was change the signs right there. That's, I'm going to rewrite that because I want my x to look better. All right, so I'll change the sign here from negative to positive and from positive 4 to negative 4. And that's it. That's it. That's all you got. It's over. So slope intercept form, we're just trying to get to y equals mx plus b, where m will represent our slope, and b will represent our y-intercept. It's going to come in very handy when we're doing our parallel and perpendicular lines, which is why I had to review it real quick.